In this video, the finds of archaeologists who were able to change the view of history are evading for you. Ancient people, tens of thousands of years ago, already knew how to create glue, and in ancient Egypt, they smoked tobacco. Watch the video to the end, and you will see the Roman weapon of intimidation, the ceremonial burial of a lynx, and the first Philistine cemetery. And you will find out how each of these finds could change history. Hi, friend, you're on the curtain. Top channel. Celtic Hybrid Cemeteries Until recently, scholars thought that there were no hybrid monsters like chimeras in Celtic mythology during the Iron Age. A recently excavated grave in Dorset has cast doubt on this and suggests that the Celts had their own mythological creatures that they recreated in real life. The discovery was made in the so-called Tyropolis, where archaeologists found transformed animal skeletons during excavations. A cow with horse legs, sheep with a bull's head, and strangely, a woman's skeleton mostly composed of animal bones. Archaeologist Paul Cheatham believes that skeletons, including female ones, were once sacrifices that were made during ceremonies. Neanderthal glue for a long time, it was believed that Neanderthals were simply not as smart or as advanced as Homo sapiens, but recent discoveries have cast doubt on this assumption. In June 2019, archaeologists uncovered evidence of Neanderthals using a primitive type of glue on their tools. The find is between 55,000 and 40,000 years old, making it one of the oldest examples of the use of glue for assembling tools. The glue was made predominantly from pine resin, but sometimes it also contained beeswax. It was poured into a recess in a wooden stick, and then a flint plate was fixed in it, and the glue was allowed to harden. This is not the first find of its kind, and it helps reinforce the belief that the practice was widespread among early humans. This also means that there is no growing evidence that Neanderthals could start a fire when they needed it. Roman Weapon of Intimidation a recent discovery suggests that the Romans used psychological intimidation methods in war, firing slingshots at the enemy. They used a handheld throwing weapon called fustibel, with which they could throw lemon-sized stones over long distances. Excavations at Burnswork Hill in Scotland have unearthed a very distinctive stone slingshot shell with holes about 5 mm in diameter drilled in the center. After researching them, scientists agreed that 1,800 years ago, the Romans used them to intimidate the enemy. Such a projectile was flying, it should have emitted a sharp, whistling sound. Extraterrestrial sarcophaguses from the underground temple not far from Giza, archaeologists have discovered a mysterious ancient burial. The burial was found 12 miles from the Great Pyramids at Giza. It consists of 24 sarcophaguses weighing 100 tons. Scientists know that cutting on hard aswan granite is done very efficiently, with an accuracy of microns. They found 24 boxes made of granite, have a length about 4 meter, a width of little over 2 meter, and a height of little less than 3.5 meters. The weight of each, according to a rough estimate, is not less than 65 tons, and together with the lid, it is about 100 tons. These boxes are set inside crypts carved into the limestone rock. It is not clear who and how placed the sarcophaguses weighing 100 tons in the crypts in a confined space. It would take hundreds of slaves to transport them, but it is impossible to place these slaves next to the crypt niche. Without the help of special mechanisms and machines, they cannot be placed. Some of the sarcophaguses are in a very narrow side niche, where a maximum of 20 people can fit and more. The floor of the niche is a meter and a half below the floor level of the main corridor. That is, the sarcophagus had not to be only somehow dragged into a niche, but also carefully lowered to the very same one and a half meters down without breaking. The discovery of strange granite boxes raised a number of questions among scientists, to which there is still no clear answer. The walls of the granite boxes are perfectly fitted and polished both outside and inside. These boxes are made to the highest level of modern space technology. The ancient Egyptians simply could not have the technology to make these structures, 
the inner part of the sarcophagus is also affected. Its walls are perfectly polished here too. How were such internal corners made? The lids to the side walls of the sarcophagus fit perfectly, without the slightest gaps of deviations, and the surface polish is just mirror-like. Egyptologists have put forward a version that the boxes found are nothing more than the sarcophaguses from the burial of sacred bulls and were made by the Egyptians by hand. The world-famous Swiss writer and ufologist Eric von Daniken suggested that the sarcophaguses were made to bury the remains of monsters that were filled with bitumen. There is evidence that in the 19th century, the French archaeologist August Marriott really discovered bitumen and bones of various animals in the sarcophagus, from scorpions to wolves. Daniken put forward his version on the basis of ancient texts, which said the hybrid deities do not revive. According to the text, these hybrids were created by gods. People humiliated them, but were afraid to touch them. After the disappearance of the gods, the hybrids died of natural causes. Ostensibly, for the burial of their romance, sarcophaguses were made. Brainless Man The scientific world was shocked by a sensation that could become the loudest at the beginning of the 21st century. We are talking about a new kind of man, Homo naledi. His remains were found in a cave near Johannesburg. This creature amazed anthropologists. Ancient man is as if assembled from parts of two constructors. One belongs to the Australopithecines who lived about 2 million years ago, the other to the erect Homo erectus who lived on Earth about 1.5 million years ago, and the feet are the same as those of modern humans. The brain is almost as small as that of the Australopithecus, by the way. That's why the scientist Lee Berger who found him called him brainless. Helmo Naledi immediately hit the 2015 science achievement chart, but the main intrigue remains. How old is he? If he lived about 3 million years ago, then his unusual features reflect the variety of paths that evolution took in the era of the emergence of the genus Homo. And then it can be built into the evolutionary tree. But if the bones are much younger, then this can confuse scientists. How was this young creature able to preserve the primitive features of its ancestors who lived several million years ago? By the way, most scientists were inclined to date in millions of years. And now the date is announced. It sounded like a thunderbolt from the clear anthropological sky. Homo naledi exists about 253,000 years ago. Several modern dating methods converged on this feature at once, though the error is practically out of the question. It turns out that these strange creatures, with signs of Australopithecus, roamed the Earth at the same time as people who had practically modern brains. Orkney Temple since the Pictish era, the Orkney Islands have been sparsely populated and almost unimportant nationally. However, in the preceding Iron Age, the Orkney Islands were the site of one of the most advanced settlements in Britain. The purpose of these structures found during the excavations of the settlement is still disputed, and many of its mysteries continue to baffle archaeologists. By Iron Age standards, its central structure was gigantic, 25 meters long and 20 meters wide. The walls were also huge, more than 5 meters thick. They are still more than 1 meter high. Despite the size of the building, the interior was only 6 meters wide. This is because there was another thick wall inside, taking up most of the interior space. In the main room, most of the space was occupied by a large fire pit in the center, around which there were large chests of drawers, the purpose of which is unknown. The roof was perhaps the most impressive part of this structure. It was made from slabs of stone that were laid out in perfect squares. The space between the inner and outer walls was carefully paved and may have been covered, creating an inner corridor that led around the inner space. The unusual building has led many to assume that it was some kind of temple, but its true purpose remains unknown. The presence of colored stones randomly scattered across the floors of the two buildings only adds to the mystery. Painted Rock of Galta 
In the early 200s, Roman soldiers worked in a quarry in Cumbria, collecting stones for the construction of Hadrian's Wall. While they were there, they decided to leave a memory behind them, carving messages in stone. These inscriptions were officially discovered in the 1500s by William Camden, one of the earliest modern historians, and his friend Julius Cotton. Thereafter, the site has, that became known as the Painted Rock of Geld was mentioned several times during the 1700s and 1800s, but the graffiti was never properly documented. Since then, erosion has destroyed some of the messages, rendering some of them illegible. The site was easily accessible to the public until the road collapsed in the 1980s. Now it is almost impossible to get to it. The rock was recently visited by archaeologists from the University of Newcastle, who had to descend 9 meters to reach it. Fearing that unique graffiti would be completely destroyed due to erosion, archaeologists made 3D models of them so that future historians could study the inscriptions. Ceremonial Burial of the Lynx in winning the collection of the Illinois Museum of Indian Artifacts, anthropologist Angela Puri found a box labeled Puppy, believed to contain dog bones excavated from a hopeful culture mound. It turned out that the bones actually belonged to a lynx cub. The discovery was notable for two reasons. It was the only decorated wildcat burial found in North America, and the only animal that was buried alone in its own burial mound. Since this lynx was only a kitten at the time of death, anthropologists suspect it was a pet. Inside the mound, they also found a necklace that Perry believes served as a collar for a cat. However, zooarchaeologist Melinda Zeter puts forward a different hypothesis. She believes that lynx had a much more symbolic status for hopeful culture and may have symbolized a connection with nature. A pot with holes, an ancient Roman garden trick. When excavating gardens in various places of the Roman Empire, archaeologists found buried ceramic pots with punched holes. Experts call them early perforati, perforated ola or simply a pot with holes. These olas are pots specially designed for gardening. They were produced in large quantities apparently throughout the Roman world, so there are many variations of them. Most often, holes were made in them before firing but there are samples in which holes were drilled after they were taken out of the oven. Why do clay pots need holes in the bottom? The answer to this question is simple. These pots were used by the ancient Romans for breeding plants. They, together with the plants, were planted in the ground of the garden, burying them almost completely. This was especially convenient if the plant was to be dug up again in the future, for example for transplanting or selling. Dozens of these pots have been found in the gardens of Pompeii and neighboring villas, such as the Villa Pompeii in Aplantis. They are known to us not only from the Vesuvius region, but also from Egypt, Greece, Britain, Jericho, and Petra. They were also used in the beautiful Hadrian Gardens in Tibur and Libya at Prima Porta. These are the prototypes of peat pots from ancient Rome. Swedish Buddha it is now widely known that the Vikings were active in trade and had their trading posts from Ireland to Russia and also reached the markets in Baghdad and Egypt. However, nothing shows the adventurous spirit of the Vikings more than a series of finds made on Helgo Island in Sweden. Helgo was home to a busy Viking trading post for much of the early Middle Ages, so items from literally all over the world are found on this Swedish island today. For example, a statue of Buddha, the top of an Irish bishop's staff, and a ladle from North Africa were found. It is speculated that the bishop's ladle and staff were captured during the raids because the Vikings often plundered territories from Ireland to Egypt, but the Buddha statue must have been traded for something. Made in Indian Kashmir around the 6th century, the statue was probably purchased somewhere along the trade route between the Middle East and Russia, where Vikings often traveled to trade, raid, or even join the Varangian Guard in Constantinople. The unusual statue was probably brought by someone to Helgo and sold to a local resident. The find confirmed what some historians suspected. The Viking trade routes stretched much further than previously thought. Although they mostly did not make it to the markets in India, the Vikings often traded with the Arabs, who in turn traded with India. First Philistine Cemetery 
The Philistines were mysterious ancient people mentioned in the Bible. It is described that they were the sworn enemies of the Israelites. In our time, some historians consider the Philistines to be a marine people, which probably originated from the Aegean Islands. The Philistines disappeared around the 8th century AD, and after them almost nothing has survived. Archaeologists recently announced the discovery of the Philistine cemetery, where more than 150 graves and countless artifacts have been found. The cemetery was actually discovered 30 years ago, but excavations took a very long time. This discovery shows that the Philistines were not hostile to cultural manifestations. They were buried with jewelry adorned with jugs filled with aromatic oils or wine or and weapon. Ancient Egyptian Tobacco one of the strangest archaeological discoveries of the past few decades occurred in Munich, Germany in 1992. Dr. Svetlana Belobanova performed a chemical test on some ancient Egyptian mummies that belonged to the king of Bavaria. To her surprise, she found traces of nicotine and cocaine on them. In ancient times, they could only be found in America. Since then, various hypotheses have emerged to try and explain how these tracks appeared. The most plausible is that the ancestors of these substances existed in Eurasia at that time, but have become extinct to this day, just like the ancient Roman plant Silphium. However, later research has shown that, in theory, the ancient Egyptians could have reached America across the ocean. Archaeological finds and ancient images of Hatshepsut Woj to Punt have revealed a complex naval infrastructure, including harbors, building materials, and the remains of the oldest marine vessels ever discovered. Extant images of Egyptian ships show vessels over 21 meters in length, carrying more than 200 sailors along with goods that could only be found along the African coast. That is, apparently, ancient Egypt could trade over long distances. There is another very curious fact. In 1909, the Arizona newspaper reported that two researchers funded by the Smithsonian Institution had discovered caves in America that contained Egyptian-style artifacts. However, there is no evidence today and the Smithsonian has no record of such a discovery. Share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell. Thanks for your views. Bye, everyone!